Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. I used to think the Pentax 6x7 was a big medium format camera. That was until I got my hands on the Fuji GX680. This not often talked about 6x8 camera has to be one of the most fully featured medium format film cameras out there with so much to like about it from the movements to the lens selection. And after using it just once, I fell in love with it and decided to make the switch to the Fuji for all my current medium format film work. But also what quickly became apparent with this is that it's a camera that isn't for everyone. So uh, in this video today, we're gonna take a look at the GX680, what it's all about, gonna share my experience with it so far after using it for about the past month. And I hope that this just helps answer some questions if this is one that you've been curious about. So when you do research online about the 680, it's pretty limited, mostly made up of like old forum threads. But the thing that's most talked about is the size and the weight. It is a big camera. People are talking about how heavy it is, how it would never make sense to use outside of a studio. And that's what this camera was made for. Fuji says it right in the manual, stating that the GX680 is designed primarily for taking studio photographs consisting of portraits, still life, and merchandise photography. And this camera was first released in 1986, followed by a version two, which is what this is in 95, and then a version three in 97. And I think it was eventually discontinued in 2010. So it was around for quite a while. And the fit and finish, especially with the version three is really nice. This is fully automated, has an auto winding back, even has a auto exposure mode if you have the AE prism. And then the back also rotates similar to an RV67. But by far, what makes this unique is the fact that it's an SLR, but it also has front movements similar to a view camera. And I'd always kind of known about the GX680. I'd looked at it a couple times, but there is one thing that led me to start looking at it seriously and eventually pick one up. And that is the price of four x five color film. So I recently started work on a new project documenting uh, World War II history here in the UK. And I originally decided to shoot this on large format color, uh, but with how expensive it's become, I found myself just becoming so indecisive with every image to the point where I really wasn't shooting much at all. So decided to make the switch to medium format, started using the Pentax 6.7, which is what I had. But since this is mostly landscape work, I did find it was a little bit limiting and I was missing some things that the view camera brought with it. So enter the GX680, all of the things I wanted from large format with the trade-off of a smaller negative for a more affordable price. And I enjoyed this camera so much that I already decided to upgrade to the version three. I'm gonna put the version two up for sale, but I'll touch more on that a little bit later. So by far one of the most appealing features as mentioned, it's just the fact that this has front movement. So this has a front rise, tilt, swing, shift with the first two of those being kind of what's most appealing to me and i just love the ability to shoot with an slr but also have that control over the image especially doing landscape work rise and front tilt as well been really handy and i found myself using them quite a bit tell you what it's very nice to have uh movements on a medium format camera a little bit of rise for this image And everything operates very similar to a view camera. So you have your uh, front knobs here to rack the bellows in and out to focus. And then all of the movements, you just unlock them. And then they also have these really nice indent zero positions that they click back into. So really easy uh, to operate. And then Fuji also offered two types of bellows. So standard and then a bag style if you're using the wider lenses. The second feature that really appealed to me is the fact that these cameras are multi-format. And this is something that does work on every version. You just have to make sure you have the latest 3N film back, which was the last one they sold. So what Fuji did is they offered a set of different masks. You can buy these individually. So I think 645, 66, and 67. And all you have to do is you go and you clip this into the back and it'll automatically recognize which format it is. And then it'll go ahead and adjust the frame spacing accordingly. So this is really cool because you know you clip in something like the 6.7 mask, 
all of a sudden you're getting 10 frames instead of the nine that you'd get with six by eight. Uh, but Fuji also sold a number of different replacement focusing screens that have the uh, specific aspect ratios marked out. So this is a six, seven screen, super easy to install. You just pull off the waist level finder, move a clip and drop this in. And then Fuji also offered a number of different finders for the 680. So it comes with this standard waist level finder, kind of what you would expect. You know, it has a flip out magnifier here and this works great. You know, pretty straightforward, uh, but they also sold a number of different ones. So I picked up this prism finder. This is probably what I've been using the most so far. Uh, it's really nice because obviously it just corrects uh, the image, but one of the most appealing finders is this one right here. So this is a loop finder. So basically it's like a mini waist level finder. It still opens up and everything, uh, but on the top it has this loop that's permanently built in and it just kind of shifts around this circle. So you can look around your frame and check critical focus. And for landscape work, this is really nice, obviously to check your initial focus, but also when you're using movements to look around the frame and see how everything's kind of aligning and coming into place. So this all adds up to give you a multi-format camera system with a bunch of really helpful accessories. For me, that looks like being a uh, six by seven automated SLR with front movements, detachable loop finder, and a really nice lens lineup, uh, which we're gonna talk about next. But uh, first, just have to quickly talk about the sponsor of the video today, which is Squarespace. As a photographer, a website is a really great way to showcase your work. But one of my favorite things is to use it to help experiment with new projects. And Squarespace makes it incredibly easy to do just that. They have really tasteful, clean templates to choose from that are also very intuitive and easy to use, which is important. And whenever I'm working on something new, I love that I can easily create a gallery page, drag images onto it to upload them, and then click and drag to reorganize. It's a really great way to sequence things and get a feel for how a body of work is coming together. And often I find I get a lot of inspiration from this. They also offer other great features like online shops, so you can sell prints of your work or books and other things like that. So check out squarespace.com today, sign up for a free trial, test it out. When you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So when it comes to lenses, there's 17 different focal lengths to choose from. One of them is a zoom. And then there's also a trio of pretty fast F3.2 lenses. I believe a 115, a 125 and a 180, some nice options uh, for portrait work. Uh, but the lenses that I ended up with are a 65 mil F5.6, 80 mil 5.6, 100 mil F4. And then I also picked up this 125 3.2. This was actually a recent purchase. It was an ugly grade from KEH. Uh, the price was right on this, so I gambled on it. A little bit of haze, but hoping I can clean it up. And you know, I've always been a really big fan of the EBC Fujinon glass, but what's really cool about the lenses for this system is that most of them stop down to F45. So doing landscape work, you know, that gives me the option to shoot at say F22 or even F32 and not be stopped all the way down. You combine that with the front tilts and it gives you a lot of flexibility for achieving like near to far focus doing landscape work. Also love the design of these lenses. So on the side, they have this little lever to adjust your aperture. And then on the top of the lens, there's this little clear window you can look through. So if you're kind of framing up, you can easily see which f-stop you're at. And then they almost have this like lens board style design where it just clips on the front of the camera, kind of how you would with a large format camera. Uh, but just like the camera itself, these are pretty massive and heavy. They certainly add to the bulk of the overall system. So when it comes to image quality, you know, I've only had a chance to really shoot a few frames that I'm happy with so far. Part of that is due to just the slow nature of working with this project. Uh, but the other part is due to just having some issues with the camera and the rolls I've shot, which I'll talk about in the next section. But I will say, you know, the frames that I've shot that I've been happy with, the detail and the sharpness from these Fujinon lenses is really nice. It certainly lived up to my expectations. You know, originally I was kind of hesitant about switching from large format to something like 6.7 just in terms of the loss in detail when scanning. But it was really interesting. There was one frame in particular, it was at a location that I shot a few weeks before, 
on large format. And I went back and shot it with the Fuji. And when you look at both of the scans side by side, the Fuji image really doesn't fall that far behind at all when it comes to detail with the method of scanning that I'm doing. So overall, I think when exposed properly and with good technique, this system with these lenses is capable of producing some really nice results. Unfortunately, I did run into some problems with the camera, both uh, with the images that I got back after getting them developed, but also while out shooting. So uh, first off, I shot four rolls of film and about half of the images total had light leak issues on them. And to me, it looks like it was an issue with the dark slide. Obviously, I have this new system now with some new backs so that hopefully should help me pinpoint the issue to this older film back but I also had some film spacing problems. So the older GX680 backs use built-in batteries for their memory. And I think what was happening with mine is when I would turn the camera off, this battery was dead. The back would forget which frame it was at. And when I would turn the camera back on, it would think it was at the start and it would advance by about an inch. So sometimes I was only able to get eight images instead of nine on a roll of film. Uh, but I did have one problem while I was out shooting where the back itself actually jammed. So like I said, you know, I'm hoping this new system and these new backs helps solve that problem and it doesn't give me any issues, but this was a good reminder. Again, with this older film gear, especially electronic stuff, you just never know. There's a good chance you're gonna run into problems at times. And especially with something like the GX680, which is fully electronic, you know, and for me working outside, it makes me a little bit nervous, but it is a risk that I guess I'm willing to accept for the features that this brings. So as you can probably tell, this is a camera system that I really do like quite a bit to the point, as mentioned, that I went and bought the latest version three, which is a little bit of an upgrade in a few ways on the two and the original. That's another video in itself and something I might do once I have some time to use this. Uh, but like I said at the start, there is one thing that became quickly apparent that would make this camera really not suitable, I think for quite a few people. And that just comes down to the size and the weight of it. So as mentioned, you often hear people saying, this is too big, this is too heavy. It's not meant to be used outside of the studio. For me personally, like, yes, it is large and it's heavy, but uh, for the way that I work, it's not this like 50 pound beast that I physically cannot move to the places I wanna go. Uh, this is coming from someone who always will hike with like a four by five setup, sometimes with the Pentax 6.7 as well and video gear. So, you know, replacing that with this really doesn't make that big of a difference at all. But I think the reason this makes sense is because it really fits my way of working. It's slower working on a tripod, taking advantage of the features that this has to offer. So I think that's what it really all comes down to is just the type of work you do. You know, if you're someone who likes to just grab a camera, go for a walk, you have like a faster paced way of working and you aren't gonna take advantage of the features that this offers, like the movements and the smaller apertures, then there's a lot of better choices out there. You know, even something like an RB67 or a Pentax 67, which are considered large medium format cameras, they're still very much manageable to go and walk about with. This camera, on the other hand, personally, if I weren't shooting on a tripod and I didn't need movements, it's not something that I would use because then the bulk would become kind of a nuisance. So I think it's all about the trade-off. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this look at the 680. You know, there's not really that much current content out there. So I wanted to make this video, share my experience so far, talk about this a little bit. And I uh, also wanna say, you know, if you are interested in movements and shooting medium format, there still always is the option to go with a roll film back for a large format camera, or even something like a Horseman VHR, which I believe is a six by nine dedicated view camera. Uh, so you don't have to buy into the system like uh, this Fuji, but personally, I really enjoy the SLR and I'm a sucker for some of the creature comforts that this brings. But um, anyways, hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear if this is a camera you shoot with or have shot with. And um, other than that, thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.